Welcome to the Silver Screen Guide Podcast. Join Corbin and guest hosts as they bring their love for the cinema to discuss films from every genre and decade. Learn about the history of the film, little known facts, and insightful explorations while they enjoy discussing your favorite film. The curtain is rising and your podcast is starting. So sit back, relax, and enjoy your guide to the silver screen. Welcome back, listeners, to the fifth installment in my Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle movie review series. Today I am reviewing Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, the 2014 reboot. This is your host, Corbin. Now, I have reviewed the previous four films in the franchise, including the CGI 2007 reboot and the live-action 90s trilogy. All of that is linked down below. Check those out. I've also got timestamps, so you can jump straight into the review or jump straight to my rating and recommendation. Links to the social pages and all kinds of great content down below. You're not going to want to miss all that stuff down there. And no matter where you're at, make sure to leave a thumbs up and a five-star rating. That is a great free way to help out the podcast. So back in 2014, I was graduating from high school. Actually, by the time this movie was coming out, I had just started about my first week of college, believe it or not. I do somewhat remember this movie coming out back then. I remember the trailers. It's not a strong memory. Needless to say, my mind was focused on making sure my best foot forward at university. And I didn't go see a lot of movies back then, so I did not see this one in theaters. This was my first time watching it on Paramount+. Plus. The trailer clearly didn't get me in back then. If I had more time, would I have gone? That's a a definite maybe. I don't know. Um, I would say I would probably rent it at least if this trailer was coming out now. I probably would once again rent it, or knowing it's a Paramount movie, and Paramount Plus is a thing now, I would just wait the now customary 45 days and watch it in the comfort of my home. Now, if you missed your guide to Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, that came out last week. Go ahead, that's the first link down below. Check that one out. That will tell you why they rebooted it, Michael Bay's involvement, um, the major drama behind the scenes all of that is in your guide so check that out listen to that and if you don't want this film spoiled for you go ahead and click pause right now then come back and click play and we'll be ready to talk about it so the opening credits for this movie are kind of weird my wife said that she thought we were in fruit ninja uh we hear shredder's voice maybe or splinter's voice it's animated, um, you know, they're really trying to build up the foot here. We do see some, you know, fruit being sliced through the air. It's not the best opening. It's not terrible, but I am struggling to really get into this opening. There is a decent introduction to April O'Neil, at least, now played by Megan Fox. Definitely playing it different than Judith Hogue or whoever the other lady was from Party of Five that also played the character. There definitely is kind of a lot going on with this opening, trying to set up these characters, trying to set up the foot and Shredder. There is a definite Batman Begins vibe as well, where Batman makes his first appearance at the docks, and that's where the Turtles make their first appearance as well. I I will say I don't think they're first, you know, appearance in this movie is as good as their first appearance in the 1990 film. Also, Whoopi Goldberg is in this movie, and I have no idea why she just makes this appearance and then drops out for the rest of the film. But the one thing I noticed that they're doing right, right off the bat, is that I like that we see Shredder's face. Shredder is very scary, very imposing. The way he is shot is, I'm actually very impressed with how they light him, with how the camera moves with him. He has this really tough opening where he's bound behind his back. He fights the foot, he breaks his bonds, and you realize this is one tough cookie. Do not mess with the Shredder. He also has a very deep, scary, foreboding voice that I really like. And speaking of the introduction to the Turtles, once we finally get to see them in all of their glory, April is trying to take a secret photo of them, and they give this very intimidating you know at least Raphael does Batman they make a joke about Batman as well it's a cool introduction to these characters I I really like it 
we do also get a sense of the personalities of the turtles. I'm laughing at the humor, especially Michelangelo's humor. And speaking of Mikey, he is my favorite turtle in this movie. They also have this very cool jump, you know, where they slide down into the sewers. And, you know, I really do like the way this camera moves along with these turtles. They are teenagers. They are, you know, frenetic and all over the place. I really like that. Also, there is a connection between these turtles and Aprils that has not been in any previous film. You come to find out that these turtles were experimented on in a lab, somewhat like Spider-Man, and they mutated into what they are today, and April actually gave them their names. That is a cool connection bonding these characters. That makes a lot of sense, because in the previous movies, it never quite made sense why April was just so willing to team up with these, you know, anthropomorphized talking turtles turtles right away it's it's kind of shocking now i will say i don't like the way master splinter looks he looks very weird i don't like the voice choice in this really um the actor who voices him you know i've seen him in a couple other things he is famous it just doesn't work for me here. He looks very off-putting and creepy. My wife and I felt that way. He does get an awesome fight with Shredder that I was really impressed with. Overall, this CGI is top rate. I am surprised it did not get nominated for an Oscar for Best CGI, considering I'm sure one of those Transformers movies has received a nomination. This looks very real, very interactive. Uh, they did a good job staging these this fight choreography, and I don't know, I think... This is all mocap stuff, but it looks good. Now, the big showcase piece in the trailer is the escape down the snowy mountain. I don't know many gigantic mountains in New York like that, that, you know, somebody could do these giant escape downs. Maybe there is. I don't know. I've never been to New York. Nevertheless, it's a little reminiscent of the Fast and Furious giant runway sequence, but I thought it was a lot of fun. There's a lot of action. It's a lot of fast-paced you know, movement. One of the last compliments I will give this film is the just the turtles themselves, how they're portrayed. They are portrayed as teenagers. They're rough around the edges. They can be a little crass. They definitely get distracted easily, you know. They just don't have these adult emotions yet. Uh, for instance, when they're getting ready to go to the big fight, Mikey starts beatboxing in the elevator, and the rest of the turtles join in. It's a lot of fun, and it's just creative. It's just a character moment that I really think does a good job of showing who these new turtles are. Now, let's talk about the bad guy, the other bad guy, not Shredder, Sax. He is has this weird Japanese origin. Maybe Shredder is like his adoptive dad, I don't know. I do know that in the original screenplay, Sax was going to be Shredder. They changed it late in the game. Sax was moved around to be you know, the underling bad guy, the second in command. His setup is obvious, and his Japanese origin just feels shoehorned into the plot. Unfortunately for this movie, trying to be realistic and trying to be humorous, there is also a fair amount of cheesiness in this movie that doesn't work. The first fight sequence does make me nauseous. I did talk about how I liked the camera movements. Some of it does go too far, I should say that. Some of it is like a roller coaster ride of just spinning around. Finally, the plot of this movie is incredibly cliche, especially the bad guy. They want to release a gas that will harm the population of the world, and they have the key, so they will, you know, use the antidote to sell it to everybody, and they will become rich. We've seen this time and again. This is a tried and true cliche plot, one that doesn't have a lot of stakes and one that doesn't feel very imperative. It does remind me of the G.I. Joe movie, the one I believe that came out back in like 2007 around the time of the other Turtles movie. This is definitely giving me very similar vibes. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles has been given the Michael Bay Transformers treatment. Despite not being directed by Bay, his influence is heavy throughout the film. It looks just like a Transformers movie. And that's not a bad thing. Despite the overly simplistic bad guy plot, we finally get to see some truly awesome fights, which is what I've at least been wanting this entire time. I like the turtles' backstory. The voice acting really does grow on me. The visual effects of the turtles are actually pretty darn impressive, and overall, I just have a good time. The creators do a lot right here. Now, I don't think this movie is great or even good for that matter. It's merely passable. But the franchise thus far has set severely low expectations. Listeners, this is the best entry in the franchise so far. I'm definitely looking forward to seeing if the sequel next week can top this one. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles receives 6 stars out of 10 with a mild recommend.
Now, I have heard people mention that this is one of their least favorite installments in the franchise because of its more raunchy or adult nature. Look, there is some weird stuff going on, you know, Mikey wanting to date April, this bestiality type stuff, whatever. I, I don't know. It was present in the other films. It really is strange. Nevertheless, this is a PG-13 movie. You know, I, I'm probably maybe your 13-year-old should be more like a 15-year-old before they see it. I still wouldn't let children watch it. It's very violent. It's very action-packed. This is a harder-edged Turtles than we have ever seen before, considering everything else was geared towards such a young audience. This really earns the PG-13 rating, and they use it to full effect. So don't get me wrong... This is not for kids. This is in a totally different vein as the other films. But nevertheless, I still think as far as my attention goes, action goes, they do something here that I think is exciting. It's new. Will I ever revisit this again? Well, would I pick up or pass this one? Maybe if I found it at Dollar Tree, I might pick it up. But otherwise, I can't see myself putting this one in my collection or really returning to it again. Some other movie recommendations I have for you. I've already mentioned G.I. Joe, the first live action movie, and go ahead and try the second one while you're at it. And then the Transformers, at least the first live action one. I, I still really like that one. I got a soft spot for it. I think it's a lot of fun. Well, it's no surprise after the immense success of this movie that they greenlit a sequel. Out of the Shadows is the subtitle for that film. It came out about two years later. They already had the assets. They already had the cast and crew under contract. They said, let's move forward. I have not seen it. I'm curious to see if it will follow in the vein or of this one or based on my memories from the trailers, if they try and gear it more towards kids. So we're going to find out next week. Well, listeners, the question after the show, is this the best or worst Turtles film we've gotten thus far? You know my opinion. Personally, I would reach for the 1990 live action one on the shelf just for the lighthearted nature, just for nostalgia. It's also a little bit shorter, so I can digest it quicker than this one. But nevertheless, I think as a total package, this is a better movie. I know that's highly controversial and divisive, and I'm definitely in the minority. Most people would disagree with me, but I want to know what do you think? No matter where you're listening, let me know. You can also email me your answer if you would like. That is down below the question in my email. Thank you listeners for joining me with my Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2014 reboot review. Make sure to subscribe to the podcast so you will not miss my review coming next week of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Out of the Shadows. The Silver Screen Guide podcast is edited and produced by Alan and Corbin. Intro and outro music is created by Thomas Rankin. The thoughts and opinions herein expressed are those of the individual and do not necessarily represent those held by Silver Screen Guide. Silver Screen Guide is not affiliated with any company or individual involved with the creation of this movie or TV show. No portion of the podcast may be used without express written permission from Silver Screen Guide.